to talk to you guys about why I like the ICF system over other systems and that's whether it's regarding residential or commercial um, I really want to build a commercial building with ICF but mostly we've just been doing residential you know I get the question either way like you know why should I go ICF versus you know precast concrete or these other panel type systems and at, at first I didn't have the answer you know like everything has good advantages and uh, we all they all have disadvantages but you know I wanted to figure out why so like, why am I an ICF fan uh, maybe over something else and so I've been asking engineers and architects and stuff and to you know get proper answers so here's just a few things I've come up with here I have some other ICF videos that I've used this little drawing on it's pretty specific um, but I'll just get to it. Um, okay, so an ICF system is monolithic. Okay, so you have these blocks, you stack them up, they're foam on either side, you pour concrete in the middle, okay? But the concrete, you pour the whole building, everything's tied together, so it's, it's one unit, okay? So, and I'll actually go into one specific here, like, for example, here's your footing, which is kind of the base to your whole building. It supports the whole load. That's your footing. Now you have rebar in there, uh, I have other videos with more specifics on it, but you have these dowels. Now the dowels are hooked like that, you put them into the footing when you're pouring them, um, then you let it all set up, then you stack your blocks, you pour your wall, and then this is set into the footing, and then after this cures it locks it all together. So those dowels we either do, depending on engineering, 16 to 24 inch on center. Okay, so what, what that does is if something uh, frost pushes something up or if the dirt falls away, it has to actually move the whole building. The footing can't fall and break away um, or can't separate the wall from that. So that's kind of like the monolithic, right? Um, then it's monolithic. There's no panels to connect. It's all just one unit, okay? Hopefully, uh, hopefully I'm making sense so far. Um, with that, so... I'll talk about like precast concrete for one and then there's just other panel systems that you know maybe are mostly all foam and then inlaid into that system are steel studs or you know they're just but they're all just a pre-built panel so you gotta order them pre-built with the window openings and all that you just come in and stand them up okay so that's kinda what I'm comparing is the three different systems with precast concrete you have, so they take these, they, they pour these giant slabs of wall, of concrete, on, you know, in a big warehouse or in a big shop. Um, everything's pre-figured out. They bring them out. They land them on a footing. You know, you can land trusses on it all. It's all good. But it's a, it's a panel system. But, so what it is, is it's concrete with rebar and all that for strength. Then it's foam on the inside, concrete on the other side. Okay. A couple things that I've heard about this system is, um, and really I'm just talking about why I like the ICF, you know, I just want to point out, um, like I said, all systems have their place, but I'm not exactly sure how you do a, a good connection from your footing to the wall, you know, like I'm thinking frost pushing up or your footing falling away, so that's one, and if your footing ever does happen to gap through water can just shoot in there like crazy okay the other thing to think about on this is if you're hot cold climb it doesn't matter if it's cold outside or or warm outside it's always a difference of temperature right so you have this concrete on this side and this on this side well they're they're different temperatures so the wall is actually going to go like this a little bit depending on the temperature outside so it's going to one side's going to expand, the other side's going to contract. So they're going to kind of fight each other a little bit. Now, because they're a precast and they're paneled system, with this system, they stick these, uh, they stick like tubes of foam in the gaps and then this special caulking, right? So if you do get shifting, your wall is really only as good as that caulking that connects it all, okay? So there's that, but then the air infiltration is actually a big one because when you're talking R value and all that stuff, like this system has a great R value um, and it's fast because, you know, while other things are happening, these guys can be building the walls and then they just come in and stand them up, right? So that's an advantage to that. But uh, the air infiltration, when you're talking R value, is 
doesn't really help you because if you're having to recover heat all the time because of these air gaps, um, I don't know, it's just, you know, air infiltration is your biggest enemy when you're trying to contain heat. But these systems, they just paint the outside, like, you know, or whatever you end up doing to that, you can stucco it, I guess. But, you know, these systems are designed just to be basically a concrete wall. But with an ICF system, because these snap ties, they just, they're every eight inches, they're about a half inch in underneath the foam. You can easily attach drywall to this side, uh, tin, stucco, siding, cement board to the other side. It's easy, every eight inches. So easy attachment. So um, you can make it maybe look a little more polished, but then you still have a monolithic unit. And then let's just refer to like other panel systems. Um, so you have this panel system, they're, they're all engineered, but you know, the more I do construction, I realize, okay, if you're doing anything underground, you're trying to fight the frost or fight water getting in, is, you know, I can do, in addition to a concrete building, I can dowel into this, drill rebar in, use like a Hilti epoxy, epoxy the two together, and, uh, and it can be engineered and, and an engineer will stand behind that because it's concrete. If it's underground, it's connected properly. But if you have like a foam panel, um, sure, it looks great, R value, and it's, and it's structural and all that. But, you know, how do you connect one wall to another and not have it pull apart and all that? So if you know the physics on, you know, how rebar works in concrete, you'll kind of get that a bit more. Um, but you know like with a panel system doesn't matter what it is is you it's only as good as the caulking that connects the two together we get into like our values and stuff a little bit too right so you have icf you have thermal mass so thermal mass is it takes um one btu of energy to change one pound of material one degree fahrenheit so basically with an icf system you have a storage house of energy, okay? For, for an example, we just finished a house, had almost 200 cubic yards of concrete in it. When you calculated all that out, that's about 800,000 pounds of concrete, okay? So basically with that house, in order for it to fall one degree Fahrenheit, it has to lose 800,000 BTUs of energy, okay? But they don't use thermal mass in our value calculations. So let's say you have a foam wall that is all foam, it's structural, it's it's strong, it's good, but you know on paper it's maybe R40 whereas this on paper is maybe only an R24. But it has no, that doesn't have that thermal mass, that storage of energy. So you know and, and if air is your biggest problem with containing heat all of a sudden you're opening doors, all this stuff's happening, you're, if air infiltration, you have to recover that heat, there's, there's not that thermal mass recovering it for you. Do, am I making that clear? Hopefully. On paper it might look better, but it's not. You know, like an, an actual ICF wall acts more, depending on area, more like an R50 to 60 because of that thermal mass. See, and what happens is, is depending on your climate, but let's say the heat, it's blasting heat at this thing all day. Well, because it takes so long to heat up all that material, by the time nightfall comes, it's already cooled off, and you won't really notice a change in temperature on the inside, but night has come, and now that all that heat can dissipate. Like a wood wall, if we want to talk about that, it only has like a 20 minute stabilization, so if it's hot out, it takes 20 minutes for that to come through the other wall and feel the effects on the other side, whereas an ICF system, it doesn't do that. I've covered the thermal mass, I've covered the monolithic, you're keeping the air out, um, everything's connected together. So I think, I think I've covered it just to kind of show you the, the differences between some paneling systems and the ICF. We're still ICF fan, it's easy to do. Um, they're light, they're easy, stack them up, pour your concrete. Um, so yeah, if that, if that doesn't cover everything, maybe check out some other of my YouTube videos on that. And thanks for joining me. So I'm here in my office. I've been thinking quite a bit about ICF construction. And, and the point that I really want to drive home is the fact that um, the, the monolithic wall system, it's, it's actually quite genius because you have this wall system that's one unit 
and it doesn't require a floor system or a roof system to hold the walls up. When you compare that to conventional like framing, uh, precast concrete walls, or even a sit panel, which is structural insulated panel, all those systems need a roof in order to hold the walls up. So in a natural disaster, if your roof goes, your walls cave in. Well, in ICF that doesn't happen. Your walls will stand on their own. Um, and the other part that's kind of the that works in that makes it so brilliant is the insulated concrete. You have continuous insulation inside and out, but within that you have an attachment system that makes it easy to attach um, exterior products, siding, stucco, cement board, tin, whatever, or your drywall or plywood on the inside. So you know you get all of those things with one system and that's what I, I really want to drive home with that. So thanks. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or check us out on some of the following.